having found out the reliability coefficient, so the next thing we need to do is to conduct the factor analysis, okay? So we go to analyze, and we go to dimensional reduction, and we go to factor. I hope, I hope we can see the screen, please. If you're not seeing the screen, if you're having difficulties, please raise your hands so you get the floor, okay? So we go to reduction dimension, and then we move the scales that we want. So we move this here, and we move this particular scale here. Then we move this here, because we can confirm the reliability of, of the three of them. So the first one was this, work placement learning. So which we have already moved, that is item one to 11. So if you see here, you can see item one to item 11 into the factor analysis, into the factor analysis. Then the next one that achieved the reliability coefficient here is leadership skill, okay? Leadership skill, or oh, learning self-efficacy, sorry. And that is 0 0.75. So we have moved it and that is item number 12 to 18. So I moved item number 12, that is 12 here to item number 18. And so the next one is leadership skill. And um, so I have the items here. So I have 19 to 27, which I have moved 19 to 27. So I want to move the next one, probably um, um, communication skill. But because I have too many variables here, factor analysis has problem with too many variables. So when you have too many variables, you are likely going to have a lot of problems, cross loadings, you know, like that. So because of that, what you might do is you take them factor by factor. So I have inserted only three factors. Remember, three factors, work placement learning, learning self-efficacy, and then communications, um, and then um, leadership skill. Okay. So now what I will need to do is that having moved in here, I will go to extraction. Now, let me explain to you that if you want to do exploratory factor analysis, then you will have to select principal components. If you want to do exploratory factor analysis, you select principal components, okay? But in this case, we want to do factor analysis. Exploratory factor analysis is when you have developed the scale yourself, maybe through interviews or through review of related empirical studies, then you have developed the items yourself. But when you adapt a scale, when you adapt a scale from existing published validated scales, which I always explain to people, it's always good for you to adapt scales from existing studies. So when you do that, it's, it's much easier. Most editors will not have problem with you, querying you why you, what, what is the, the, the validity, the reliability uh, of this instrument and stuff like that? Because it has already been validated in a previous study. So all you need to do is adapt the scales and then confirm it, check the reliability and validity uh, uh, you know, scale in your own study, all right? So what I will do is that I will check principal as their factoring and then I will go to factor, fix factors, I will put Three. Why did I have to put three? Because I am interested, I am measuring, I'm checking for now, I'm checking three variables, three scales, three factors, right? Which was work placement learning, um, learning self-efficacy, and leadership skills, okay? So that was why I fixed three. Then I say, okay, I will go to rotation. If you want to do exploratory factor analysis, which you have to choose principal components, then you have to click on very mass. But because I am doing confirmatory factor analysis, given that the scale I am using has been adapted in previous study, right? Then I have to choose pro mass. So I've chosen pro mass, okay? And then I will select here. And then, and then I will go to um, extract, and then I will go to option and say sorted by size, sorted by size. 
then and then I will suppress. I will say, okay, let me suppress it by a factor of four. So what it means is that if there is any item that is loading below four, because I don't want you to cross load, I don't want to have problem. If there are items that the reliability is not doing well, it's going to cut it off by a factor of four, by absolute value, sorry, by absolute value of four, okay? So, and I will say, okay, then I will click this. Now, let me see whether, if, uh, at this point, is anybody confused? Please just go on to explain what you just analyzed. Okay, okay, so at this point, okay, someone asked a question, why do we need to run factor analysis? Yes, which is very fine. A brilliant question, really. Why we have to run factor analysis is because we need to reduce one of the reasons for running factor analysis is one to reduce the number of items that we have. So this goes on to explain to us that when we tell our students <laughs> that um, our 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 this, the instrument that they have developed in their project work is not plenty. That is wrong. That is a renos. For example, I have seen where students developed items up to five, or uh, up to uh, six, seven, and the supervisor will frown at it. The supervisor will say, no, uh, they are small. You need to raise these, you need to let it go up to 18, 20. They hire the items. No. The essence of factor analysis is to reduce the items and then be able to make use of those ones that the respondents understood clearly. Like I have 11 items measuring work placement learning. So the essence of dimensional reduction of factor analysis is to enable me to reduce the number of items. So if I come to this analysis now, this is the factor analysis that I have done. So you can see that here, I have my interest here is to go to pattern matrix. So I'll go to pattern matrix. Now you can see that here item four, item four and another item is cross loading. So if you go here, you will see that factors, I have three factors. Now factor one, two, and three, this factor one is work placement learning. Factor two is learning self-efficacy. And factor three is leadership skill. So you see items that are loading a little higher, they are all on their own living below if you see here you can see that these items are not making they are not meeting the metric they are not meeting the church route. they are not meeting the church route. that is why they are not here that is why they are removed you can see that that's why they are removed right so the analysis has already cut them off like here you can see these items are but again there is a problem because we are having a cross loading so this cross loading is showing that this particular item has a problem of reliability so it could be that the, that the individual respondents may have not been able to understand clearly the concept here. Please, am I, I don't know whether I'm, am I communicating at all? Okay, yeah, hands up, yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, from this um, output now that you have. Yeah, pattern matrix, have, yeah? Yes, so which one now do we say is accepted? And the ones that are not accepted based on this output, I'm seeing. dude. That's that's the that's a pretty that's a pretty um, you know question here. I'm going to show at least two or three different analyses to now show us what can happen when we have good good scale when we collected our data well, or when the respondents understood clearly our data. Okay. So the difference between respondents understanding our data and the, the difference between uh, when they just tick our data set. So when they clearly understand our data, you now find out that the, the responses will appear to be a little nice. The, the individual, individual, individual reliability coefficient will be a little bit higher and will be good. The items on, them, on their own will load at least above 0.7. Like you can see here, we are only select on that work placement learning here. Well, we can only select 
two items that are loading okay pretty three items that are loading below and um, above 0 0.6 if we go by metrics from higher at all 2010 you can see that all these items may actually give us problems when we eventually run confirmatory factor analysis okay when we eventually run confirmatory factor analysis so we are going to we are likely going to have some problems with meeting the the model fits which we want because this the essence of this is for us to test probably hypothesis okay so if we did not or if we do not if we are unable to achieve the model fit then we we have no moral justification to run our regression analysis i don't know whether i'm communicating now in this particular case so we have factors one two mm, and three and three now under this factor three so you can see the items that are able to come up right but let us see yeah. if we reduce our factor if we reduce our fees factor by three which is which most most researchers usually limit it to three let us see what will likely happen whether we'll achieve more so we go to pattern matrix so you see when we go to you see we have a lot of cross loading mm -hmm. you are seeing that we're having a lot of cross loading here and the reason why we are having a lot of cross loading is because we have items that individually individually items responded by your respondents individually they are not meeting up the reliability they are not reliable on their own <laughs> they are not meeting that reliability coefficient re recommended by Kronbach himself of 0 0.7 at least that is why we're having this cross loading here if we cut them by 4.5 let's say 0 0.45 and let us see what will likely happen okay so you can see what happens now that we don't have cross loading again so you see our yes. pattern matrix we do not have cross loading again so what it what happens now is that it has automatically reduced remove those items that are not reliable you can see item 24 25 23 21 are gone in addition to others, if you come here, you can see all these other items. So leaving us with this alone, to know whether I can achieve model fit, I can now at least run a confirmatory factor analysis with this to know whether I'm able to achieve model fit. 